Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am creating with digital stamps from the Not Too Shabby Shop. This is actually the very first challenge for the Not Too Shabby digital design team. So the digital images that I'm using were drawn and created by Jamie, who is the owner of the Not Too Shabby Shop. And we are challenging each other to use three images to create a project and include embossing, whether that be dry embossing with an embossing folder or wet embossing with ink and embossing powder. So that's what I'm gonna do in today's video and you're invited to play along. So if you wanna do this challenge where you create with three digital stamps from the Not Too Shabby Shop and embossing, please do so and post your project or card anywhere you like on social media. Just use the hashtag Not Too Shabby Digi Challenge. And then we can all see each other's stuff and comment and just connect. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'll show you the images that I chose for my card today. I'm using the Coffee Cart Digital Set. This uh, set comes as a set where you can print out all the pieces and put your own coffee cart together like I showed in a previous video, or you can get these already put together carts. I'm gonna use the one on the top. I'm also gonna be using Pumpkin Spice Everything, which comes with that sentiment. So I'm counting that as one image. My third image will be the sentiment, let's go for coffee. The embossing folder I'm using is pretty plaid. Isn't that awesome for fall? I also wanna talk about my printer. I use the HP Envy 7645. It has thermal inkjet ink. And then the paper that I use is what I call cheap cardstock. And it is a very lightweight. It comes in a giant ream for like five or six bucks. I usually get it at some place like Walmart. You can order it on Amazon. I'll try to link it for you below with all the things in this video. I am going to be Copic coloring and that's why I kind of shared about the um, printer and the paper because I've had questions about that. I have no trouble with this paper or my ink um, blend, you know, uh, smearing. Sometimes when I color over the ink, I do get like a little blurriness, but it's like once the ink dries, that blurriness goes away. I try to avoid coloring over the black lines if at all necessary, but I did do some on purpose when I colored this out today. So here I'm coloring out the little coffee cart, coloring right over those lines, and I had no trouble. Here's where I did have the trouble. My YR04 marker is practically dried up. So I don't have as much orange on the awning of my cart as I wanted. So you'll see me at the end of the coloring go back and fix that with a little marker combination that I found that worked well. It'll be a little bit darker orange, but that's okay. So I am showing all the markers I'm using as I'm using them, except this one, which is uh, BG74, I believe. And I had to change out the color of this pumpkin because my orange situation, I only have like two orange markers. And so I did this kind of teal color, which I have seen at the pumpkin patch like it's a real thing and I love how it turned out because I needed that balance of a cool toned color. So here's the marker combination I decided to use to fix my awning. It's R17 with my YR07 and YG17. It's a crazy combination but it ended up working out really well to fix my awning. I'm just picking markers that seemed like good fall colors to color out all these little coffee images. And I love how it turned out. I just have fun grabbing markers and coloring, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, this cart is super fun to color. Like I said, I've already colored it once. If you haven't seen that video, it was a Christmas card, and I will link that for you at the end of this video so you could click right over and watch it if you missed that one. Um, so there I am fixing that, and I, it, like I said, it's a little darker than I had anticipated, but in the end, I really like how it turned out because of the background that I'm going to put this on. I had, I never used the ink pad that I am using for the background. So it ended up being like um, a happy accident with the teal pumpkin and the dark orange on the top. Loved it. So there's all the markers I used. And here are the images I love. I'm just using flicks across the bottom of that cart to make it look like wood. I've done this before with my uh, Avery L 
uh, booths that I've made. If you haven't seen any of my Avery L videos, make sure you go check out that playlist on my channel because I love Avery L things. And this cart reminds me of that, so I instantly fell in love with it. I'm cutting this out using my pick scan mat and my Cameo Silhouette. I take a picture of it with my phone, open it up in Cameo Silhouette. I'm able to trace the images and then offset that trace so I can adjust how far away I want that cut line and run it through my machine. Ta-da, love it. Okay, so now I am using this Hero Arts Ombre Pad. I won this in like a giveaway. I've never used it. I've had it for a few months. So I thought I would brayer it onto my cardstock for my card front. And um, always when you're brayering on ink like this, it's going to look like a hot mess at first. And you're going to be like, oh, this is for the trash bin. But just keep going. Add some layers and you'll see it start to blend together. Now I needed the yellow to come down a little bit farther. So I brought in a blending tool and you know, this is really splotchy looking, but I just kept going. And in the end, it works out. So sometimes your ink needs to like chill and needs to calm down down and like soak into the paper and just rest for a minute and then it looks amazing. So I thought I would try spraying this with my distress sprayer and it did nothing really about wet my paper. So now you know. Um, I was thinking okay this is going to be cool as I started drying it with my heat tool. See how it's like you got those splotchy little marks. I love it. It wasn't necessarily splatter but once I completely dried it now they were gone. Once it was all the way dry, nothing. It maybe helped um, the, you know, edgy lines from blending kind of fade out, but no, no splatter. So I had to splatter it myself. I'm using Gold Silk from Fun Stamper's Journey. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love silks from uh, Fun Stamper's Journey. They're at the Spellbinder shop. They have all different colors. I wanted to put some grassy hills on this and I pulled out the green paper I wanted to use, my little scrap um, sleeve there. And guess what? There was already two or there was more than two. Grassy hills already cut. I have to remember what dye I used, and I'll link that for you also. Um, but I was really excited that I didn't have to die cut them. So I just added a little kiwi slice ink to the edge, which is the color of this paper, just to darken it up a little bit because I've got this kind of sunset night sky going on. So having that dark edge really plays into that look the little shadows, you know? So I glued them on, stacking them up, and this is where my little images are going to sit. I'm gonna put them on with foam squares. I'll tuck the little wheels under that grass a little bit and kinda, I see I put it off to the side so it looks like it's on the edge of the hill, and then I'll put the pumpkin images over to the side in the foreground. Now I have some sentiment banner dies from Honeybee that I'll use to cut out the saying. So this pumpkin everything sentiment actually comes with that pumpkin latte image that's in the foreground and I separated them when I printed them out because I needed this pumpkin spice everything to be smaller. I could have just cut them apart but it needed to be smaller in relationship to that pumpkin image so I that's why I separated them, cropped them down, and sized it differently so it could fit right in that cart, kind of like a, a sign for the cart. Now, the Let's Go for Coffee is from the coffee cart set, but when you get this download of the coffee cart, you get a whole sheet of images that you can die cut out and um, piece together to make your own coffee cart. Plus, you get three coffee carts that are already put together for you. So it's a huge digital set. It's super fun and I'm loving playing with it. So I'll uh, make sure and link the Christmas one that I made of this for you. And now I have the fall one with the already put together cart. So I just added a little ink over the top of Let's Go for Coffee, snipped off one end of that banner, and that's gonna go at the top. And then I wanted to add a little color to this bump the uh, pumpkin spice sign. And so I just brought in my BG 10 because I thought I needed to pull in that kind of tealish color one more time and it would be a good tra or a contrast to the coffee cart. So sticking that down and I love it. So cute. All right, so I'm popping that panel, my card front up onto my embossed piece. So I just have the little lines peeking out from behind that um, focal image and put that onto a top folding note card. And that um, is pretty much it, except the embellishment phase of the card making. So I have these um, sequins that I also got 
uh, as part of that giveaway with that ombre pad and it's perfect for this card. So that tiny one I just stuck on is kind of translucent. I do end up switching that out to something um, that shows up a little bit better. And then three here at the bottom. And um, <laughs> I did have a little trouble with that little one right there because I was doing my white gel pen and I kept bumping it. So it ends up being in a different spot at the end of this card because it just wouldn't behave, you know how sequins are. They're so naughty. All right, so I felt like the white behind this cart, like I really wish I would have taken the time and the diligence and had patience even to cut that out. But since I didn't, I took my T0 marker and made a little shadow around it and it made me much happier. So now onto the gel pen. Stephanie Williams, Steph Williams, are you watching? I am learning so much from you on my gel pen skills. So what Steph does, which I totally copied from her, she puts her gel pen line very close to the black line of the stamped image, and then she puts the three little dots. I don't, I don't know why this isn't, like it doesn't come natural to me, but I needed some help with my gel pen skills, so I am thanking you, Steph, for this help it really makes a difference to me and I went a little crazy overboard with the gel pen and I loved it <laughs> so I die cut out a second image for the inside a sentiment really and before I stuck that down I wanted like a little yellow glow behind it so it wasn't just white on white and this one says uh, this one's on me so you could put a little gift card in there and then you and your friend could go out for coffee it would be so sweet right and probably it would have to be pumpkin spice something but you know, only if you're into that. And uh, that finishes up the card. So I had so much fun with this challenge. And like I said, you can totally play along with us. Um, post your creation with some not too shabby digital images, three of them, and use embossing. And then when you post it, make sure that you use the hashtag not too shabby digi challenge. And I will go out there and look for you and comment and see your cool creations. And we can just connect that way. All right. I thank you so much for watching. I will be back again very soon with another creation. So feel free to subscribe and ring the bell and then you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Happy stamping. Bye.